Hi everyone. <clears throat> this is Catch Your Breath 60 at tea, on Tea Time Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My name is Barbara Moore and I want to welcome everybody to my uh, open page. This is an open page, it's not a private group and so you are able to put comments in or uh, ask questions as you feel um, you need to. Well, this is uh, quite a difference between uh, the last week and this week, eh? So uh, everything has been shut down, the world is shut down, and uh, we are all, or should be, for those of us that have, <clears throat> that have COPD, we should be in self-quarantine. So I closed my doors last Friday. I uh, cancelled and opted out of uh, respiratory rehab. I was so looking forward to going and I thought this was such a perfect time of the year for it. You know, the in-between seasons, right? And uh, I had a visions of uh, going there in the cool weather and finishing in the hot weather and having a beautiful summer. So it appears that that's not going to be happening. Um, so uh, I opted out of respiratory rehab, but I heard since then um, that they've all, they've all closed their doors. So uh, going to the gym is not a good idea. Um, you, can't, you can no longer sit in a coffee shop and uh, drink a coffee. Uh, you can no longer um, uh, go anywhere, actually, except for uh, pretty much groceries, right? And I think that... Um, hi, Sandra. Thanks for joining today. I think that um, uh, the world has its fill of toilet paper, or at least it should by now. Hi, Kevin. So huge difference from last week, you know. Um, I remember waking up last week and thinking, wow, it was going to be a really weird week with the full moon, the time change, and Friday the 13th. But here we are, right? Hi, Carol. Thanks for joining. And so um, here we are today, and boy, what a difference a day makes, eh? Uh, it seemed like th Thursday and Friday, like almost everything happened. And Saint happy St. Paddy's Day to you guys, to everybody, um, to you especially, Kevin. Um, some of us celebrate and some of us don't. We we used to, oh, in the olden days when I could drink, man, we used to celebrate big time for St. Paddy's Day, but not so much anymore because, you know, it's hard to do that with a glass of water. So uh, um, these are really times of uncertainty. So how is everybody feeling about the COVID-19? Um, we're really having a, a dickens of a time here Um it has uh, spread throughout the United States, and we are just embarking on it in Canada. We don't have a whole lot of cases here, but we do have some cases. And I've heard a few people saying how how very scared they are and how, um, uh, you know, uh, people are talking about this like it could be the end of the world. Well, you know, it's probably not going to be the end of our world um, unless you're stupid enough to go out and uh, contract the disease. And I hope that everybody has the ability to stay home. I think most of us are on disability and not really actively working. So um, if you have the ability to stay home, I urge you to do that. Um, what's everybody saying in their corner of the world? I know in the, uh, in the United States, it's really uh, bumped up and there's quite a few cases in the United States. So you're probably better not to be using things like bank machines and... Uh, Grocery shopping carts, unless you're using gloves, right? You've got to use gloves. Hi, Molly. How are you? I bet you're celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day, aren't you? So when we're faced with uncertainty in life, we tend to let our minds go to negativity. And I wanted to talk um, today more on mindfulness and meditation because I find it such a valuable tool in my toolbox. And it's something that I... Kevin says that he's he he's encouraged with the government here has uh, in the United States has taken some smart steps and has made some wise suggestions on how to slow the spread of coronavirus and I believe that we all have to be part of this right this is um this is um a problem that everybody faces right for those of us that have COPD 
it's a little bit harder uh, decisions that you're facing, right? Because this is actually um, a virus that is affecting the lungs and it's, it's not really affecting anything else, right? Um, so if you're not uh, self-quarantining or uh, what are they saying? Self-distancing. Um, you need to start thinking about that right now, eh? And so, why isn't it any fun, Molly? What are you What are you doing in in uh, in your house? What What kinds of things are you thinking about that you um, uh, that you can do over this next two or three weeks? And I I gotta say that I really do believe that for us, it's going to be a little bit longer than two weeks, right? I know they're saying we're going to quarantine for two weeks. They've closed the schools in Canada. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I think I've misspoke. I think they've closed the schools in Ontario. I don't know that it's across Canada, but I know in Ontario they've closed the schools for three weeks. So this would be the traditional March break uh, where everybody gets a week off and uh, they've extended that for another two weeks. We don't know if the kids will be going back in three weeks. We have no idea. It's kind of a wait and see thing. Hi, Susan. Thanks for joining. So when we find ourselves in, in, uh, in uncertainty, and this is definitely a time of uncertainty, we all tend to uh, navigate towards negative outcomes. And we, when we park there and continue the negativity, our anxiety reaches levels that are unprecedented. This anxiety can cause a worsening of your breathing symptoms, and we all know that. We all know that anxiety can do that. So, how do we go about um, how do we go about the job of calming ourselves in these troubled times? We're not the only people who are affected by this, and we know that. Um, but what are some of the things that will happen? Well, you know, I've told you before that my daughter is a social worker, and so she's. Um, brought me along quite a ways in the last four years. Some of the things that she says to me when when um, the situation gets bad or when I, I'm starting to think about, um, uh, you know, my panting gets bad, my breathing gets bad, and she says to me, okay, what is the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that can happen? And for me, the worst thing that happens, well, for me, uh, exacerbations are pretty tough. Um, because I experienced sudden cardiac arrest and I, I actually pass out. So that is my worst case scenario. Now that's happened to me three or four times already. And I've always been uh, revived because, you know, I'm still here today, right? So um, the worst case scenario outcome isn't the end of the world for me. It means that the paramedics have to be called and I might have to spend a couple of days in hospital. But other than that, um, I've always survived it and I've done it pretty, I've done it very well. What is your best case scenario? And the best case scenario is that we're not going to get this. It's going to be an interruption of our lives for a couple of weeks, but we're not going to get this because we're going to be really, really careful and we're going to wash our hands. We're going to stay out of the crowds. And uh, yeah, let's do some spring cleaning. That's great, Molly. Molly is spring cleaning and watching Netflix. And when it's nice outside, she goes into her garden. Um, so, you know, for gardening is, is just something, we're just on the cusp of it here in North America. And um, so we're not, we're not exactly in our gardens, but what I've done to kind of uh, lighten the day a little bit and to lighten the situation is I've started some gardening myself, some indoor gardening, and it's so much fun. So if you don't know what to garden and you don't have any seeds, you still don't have to go for them. Take the seeds from your tomatoes, take the seeds from your peppers, take the seeds from the um, um, from anything else like cucumbers or anything that you have. You can start them in, in um, a cup containers, right? So all you need is a little bit of dirt and you get those those seeds starting. And that's it's really fun. It's it's actually a lot of fun. Um, good for you, Jody. Good for you. Uh, why are you in the hospital, Jody? Jody is safely tucked away in a negative pressure room in the hospital. So why are you in a negative pressure room? Um, Carol, your sunflowers are doing great. I'm, I, I'm actually going to put a, a, a picture up of them after we're done here. Your sunflowers are doing great, and I have lavender coming up. I have tomatoes coming up. I have lemon coming up, and I'll put, the, I'll put up pictures of them all later today. 
So we have lots of outcomes and your worst fear is seldom materialize. And we, I think we kind of know that, right? Um, as I'm, as when I was talking last week, I was talking about uh, getting down my stairs and I was talking about standing at the top of the stairs. And when I'm standing at the top of the stairs, oh, is that true, Susan? All schools are closed in Alberta till September. And the reason why, because out west, uh, west in Western Canada, BC and Alberta, those places, uh, they were hit a little bit harder than everybody else and much, much sooner. So they, they're going to close their schools till, till September. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens everywhere. So lots of outcomes in your worst case scenario uh, seldom materializes. And as I was saying, I stand at the top of the stairs, uh, trying to get down the stairs, and I think to myself, what's going to happen? Here's where I am, and I have to change my uh, cannulas from my concentrator to my tank, whatever kind of a portable tank I'm taking. And in that time, it, the uh, pressure is just a little bit different. I'm feeling anxious because I know I have to go out. Um, I have to get down the stairs and I have to get to the car and getting to the car is the worst part for me. So as I'm standing there changing my cannulas and I'm standing at the top of the stairs, I'm leaning on a railing so that I'm not uh, putting pressure on my chest. You know, my, my upper body is, is rested so I don't have to put pressure on it to breathe. And as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about what is the worst case scenario what is the best case scenario? And what is the thing that is likely to happen? And as I'm, as I'm thinking, I'm thinking the best case scenario, and I'm trying to keep these thoughts in my mind about walking down the stairs, sitting in the bench at the end of the stairs, catching my breath, and then going to the car, and it's going to be an easy transition. And when I do that, sometimes I have to in order to keep my breath maintained, I have to increase the oxygen in my can in my uh, tank, and I'm free to do that. Um, you know, everybody is free to increase their oxygen just a little bit on exertion. Um, and so, when I I play these good scenarios in my brain, I can usually get through a situation without having anxiety. And that's my that's what I hope for all of you that you can get through this without having too much anxiety. Rather than holding on to future scenarios and thinking about the worst that can happen and thinking about all the bad things that are going to happen, let's think about the present moment. Let's stay in the present moment. And your present moment <clears throat> should be manipulated by your breathing. When we're talking about mindfulness and we're talking about staying in the present moment, what we're talking about um, what I what we're talking about is um, letting your breath guide your mind. So in let it, instead of letting these thoughts that come in through your head and, and ping off your brain and go, whoa, you know, you could you could um, like get out to the car and you could uh, run out of cannulas and you could run out of breath. And, you know, you might, you might have to call an ambulance. And that's my worst case scenario, right? So keeping your mind off of this, we're keeping our mind on our breath, always on our breath. And this is what makes mindfulness so good for all of us, right? Um, this is what makes uh, mindfulness so good for all of us, that it, it, is, it focuses on your breathing, and we all need to focus on our breathing. So... <clears throat> When your mind jumps to the futures, think about uh, the effects on your emotional, on your emotions, your motivation, and your body. Um, so we have to ask the three questions. What is the worst case scenario? What is the best case scenario? What is likely to happen? And in order to do this, this allows us to uh, bring our minds back to the present What is the sickness? Bethesia Campbell, do you have the sickness? She asked me, do you have the sickness? I don't know what the sickness is. I have COPD, um, if that's what you're talking about is the sickness. So I have COPD. Allow your breath to, to um, lead your mind. And every time your mind wanders into something that's going to be bad or some situation that um, you think is going to be bad for you, 
bring it back, bring your thoughts back to your breath, thinking only of your breath and concentrating only on your breathing. There's an excellent, excellent app down, out there that's called Headspace, and it's free and they have a Uh, Headspace has a free, um, you can sign up for free and you can do meditations. And what I like about Headspace so much is that it's for people who are beginners. And so I've been on Headspace for probably two or three years now. And um, I still go back to the beginning because I can usually do two or three minutes of meditation. But I'll tell you when it helped me the most. When I was in, in bed sick, I had a cold and it wasn't a chest cold, it was a head cold. So for those of us that get head colds, you know, the antibiotics and the um, uh, steroids, they don't work for us. You know, they don't work for head colds for just a regular cold. They only work when you have a virus, right? So, um, or when you have uh, pneumonia and it's gone down into your lungs, right? So um, I have to suffer through my head colds. And um, uh, when I found the meditation really worked for me was when I was trying to sleep with a head cold because my... I can't sleep without my BiPAP on and my oxygen, but I can't breathe through my nose, so I have to breathe through my mouth. And you know, when you breathe through your mouth, you get very, very dry, right? And of course, I'm water restricted, so I have a real problem with this, right? So uh, what the meditation that I practiced really helped me. Um, I, it really helped me to get concentrated on my breathing, to concentrate on my breathing, to forget everything else that was going on. And Vicki, I agree with you. Vicki says she uses prayer with her breathing. And uh, for those of us who are religious and those of us that believe in prayer, I think it's an excellent idea. Oh, Bathsheba, sorry, sorry, I pronounced that wrong. I'm, I'm terrible with names. You'll find out if you come here a little bit more often, you'll find out that I'm horrible with names. I used to be a business instructor and I'd have a class of 32 starting and I would, it would take me forever till the end of the course to uh, learn everybody's name. Everybody knows I, I'm just terrible with names. And the other thing that I usually do is if I see a picture of you, I give you a name and so then it's really hard for me to remember your name. Um, so these are, these are tough times, right? We're not, we're not having a lot of fun here. But some of the things that I would suggest that we maybe start doing is a gardening club. Let's start a gardening club. We'll start it tomorrow. And um, we'll talk about some really cool things that we can grow even without soil. Like there's a lot of herbs and stuff that you can grow without soil. It's okay to be scared and anxious, but it's not okay um, to let your anxiety get the best of you. We have to be very, very careful of this during these times because these are pretty scary times, right? Um, and I know that there's some people out there who are not taking it seriously. I have one son who's taking it very, very seriously and another son who refuses to stay in. So <clears throat> um, if the news is bothering you, stop listening to the news. Nothing's going to happen that you need to know in this newscast, okay? So, um, <clears throat> yes, I'm very religious. Um, Bethy, 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 I'm so sorry. I am very religious, but i um, not a practicing Catholic, but I am a Catholic and I am very religious. Um, we have to take a break from watching the news. Get off of the news thing. Stop listening to it. Stop answering those emails that are all over Facebook and everything about what can happen and how this is going to affect us and everything. What we need to know is when the symptoms start, what we do. And I had an excellent, excellent um, video up by um, MZ Dog. He's a doctor. And hi, Jean. Thank you for joining us today. I so hope you're feeling better. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're not out yet, but I hope that you're feeling better. Um, so I had a video up earlier last week. Uh, this, this is a doctor from the United States, and he's talking, us, talking to us about what we need to know and when, how, what we need to know and when we know we, will have, we have coronavirus. We don't have to um, 
we don't have to go be tested to know that we have it. I think it's, this is one of these things where you kind of know you've got it if you've got it, right? And so it's okay to be anxious and scared, but it's not okay to let your anxiety get the best of you. Take a break from social media. Do what's best for your mental health. Remember that I'm only a text away or an email away, and anybody can uh, can uh, get a hold of me at catchyourbreath60 at gmail.com. I don't know any more than you do. I honestly don't. And probably I know a lot, way a lot less than you because people keep getting a hold of me and saying, did you hear this? Did you hear that? Did you hear the other thing? And I'm not really on top of it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not at all on top of it. Um, so... But I, I'm, I'm willing to talk to anybody who needs, a, who needs a, a, a hand on that. Distract yourself by doing what makes you smile. And so what makes me smile um, all the time is um, uh, gardening. I love gardening. Not as much as I love my grandson, but I love gardening. And I love to look at things and say, you know what, you wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for me. Um, you'd still be sitting as a package of seeds in the grocery store. So that's what I'm spending my time doing uh, this week. I'm doing a little bit of um, uh, spring cleaning, a.k.a. my husband will be doing it under my direction. And um, take control and do what you need. Because these are, are uh, different times. And I think it's a perfect time of the year for this to happen. Right as the uh, seasons are changing and we're embarking on spring, we at least have something good to look at. And I can pretty much, I can pretty much um, predict that within a month this is going to be over, and so we'll be fine. Like everybody's going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. We just have to use some common sense and um, let everybody have some toilet paper. I think the toilet paper is the the biggest the biggest scandal of all. Like I think it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, So let's get a let's get some headspace, okay? Let's sign up for headspace and get some um, free meditation and uh, some um, time for yourself. So when you're meditating, it's really <clears throat> it's really 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 hard at first. And one of the reasons why it's hard is because you keep letting your brain tell you that you don't need this information when in fact you really do need this information. So it took me a long time to figure it out, but I tell you. If you can get 10 minutes by yourself, meditating for 10 minutes will make you feel like you've had a brand new day or a whole new sleep. If anybody needs anything, um, let us let me know. If anybody is in, in, um, uh, in Canada, I have some uh, bronchial drugs, but we haven't had any shortage. Um, we haven't had any problem getting our medications or anything. So I think on that deal that everybody's going to be okay. So, let's get some Headspace. Uh, it's www.headspace.com. Next week, we're going to talk about a journey called mindfulness. And if you can get some meditation done and keep concentrating on your breath all the time that you're doing it, you're going to be so much further ahead from uh, mindfulness. This is Barbara Moore. I um, appreciate you following me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Um, Instagram, and uh, of course my blog at catchyourbreath60.com. Uh, we are, uh, I work hard to answer your questions every day, so please do leave me a comment and let me know that you were here and what you think. If you would like anything um, to talk about in the next segments of Catch Your Breath 60, please feel free to let me know. I appreciate every one of you who have come today. This is Barbara Moore, and I'm signing off for Catch Your Breath 60. Thank you.